Hi, why are there lifts behind me? Why am I echoing in a basement car park? Well, I'm under the building for my new lab. I thought we'd check it out. It's still under construction, but let's go have a quick look, shall we? Let's go. Exciting stuff. I'm going to take a lift every day now, and well, eh, it's not that fun. There are fire stairs, but well, they're on the outside of the building and you can't get bottom access. At least I don't have a key for it yet, so I don't know. Anyway, I might be able to find a better way around that, but every day in the lift, let's go. And ta-da! Here is the new lab. Check it out. It's exactly the same one that uh, I showed you before, but uh, with the headlamps because the power wasn't uh, turned on then. But the power is turned on now, so I'm, uh, I'll give you a look around. As you can see, it's still an absolute mess, totally under construction. Um, I've just finished painting the walls uh, here, at least uh, in this part of it. I haven't finished painting the uh, office uh, cubicle over there at all but anyway i thought i'd give you a quick look around i'll give you a better uh tour when it's done but a lot of people i've been tweeting the photos a lot of people have been asking about the bench build and i've got some time lapse uh photos of the whole thing but uh, i thought i'd show you some details and this is the main bench check it out it's huge it's actually as i think somebody on twitter pointed out it's actually uh the same size or slightly bigger bench space than my entire previous lab so it's crazy now it's actually uh 6.3 meters long by uh 900 millimeters deep that's about 19 feet or something like that for you yanks so uh 19 feet long and uh it's 30 millimeters uh pine everything well all the main bench all the legs and all the uh bracing and stuff like that is made out of uh plantation pine so this is 30 millimeter thick uh, pine each piece is 900 deep by 2.1 meters wide and uh, they're all uh, individually separate benches so I can literally there you go lift it up no worries each individual bench moves but I might actually uh, join them together um, just to give it just to make it a bit more rigid and things like that once it's finally complete so that's the main bench and uh, we'll take a look at the bottom part of it here let's have a look and here we go this is what it's uh, like underneath i've just got uh cross bracing pieces there are uh, pine as well there are uh, i think uh 70 millimeter by 19 millimeter or, or 13 millimeter pine or something like that um and i've got a top strip up there with the power boards now the power boards, I've actually got a total of 60, <laughs> six zero power boards. I've got uh, 10 strips of uh, six each. I figure that should just about do it. Um, so I'm quite happy with that. Uh, by the way, there are 920 millimeter high posts. I, I've pretty much over the years, I've come to think that's a pretty ideal uh, height. So that doesn't include the thickness um of the bench itself so they're 950 millimeters uh total height and uh as you can see i've tried to duplicate the main uh hopefully if you compare this to my previous videos this will probably be where my camera will sit something like this in this corner here and uh that will be the view where i'll do uh most of the uh talking head shots anyway of the new video so um, it, you know, I've tried to keep the same look and feel now this uh, all of the rack stuff up here um, This racking is exactly the same uh, stuff. I just reused it from my old lab So the old lab has been uh, totally dismantled now, but the uh, benches are all new um, I didn't reuse the benches from my old lab I sort of kept them there because they're on like a swing up type arm so I can move them out of the way but the uh, all the metal shelving a lot of people have been asking about that. It's actually um ikea <laughs> a lot of people don't like ikea but i think that they're really quite nice they're uh, these are all uh, galvanized um steel and it's called the uh broda system so if you look up uh broda shelving from I ikea you'll actually find it and they're uh, just metal legs they're not 
attached to the wall or anything like that. You can actually attach them to the wall, um, but technically if I do that, I think that's uh, probably counted as an office uh, fit out. So I would have to get uh, strata approval and all sorts of things for that. But um, as it stands, this is all uh, freestanding stuff. And uh, as you can see, they've got uh, legs on the bottom and they do freestand. Um, and they can't fall forward, of course, because they're just sitting behind the benches. So the benches aren't attached in any way. Now, I did have these uh, metal ones in the old uh, lab, these galvanized metal uh, shelving, and I rather like those, but I did get um, some pine, once again, uh, plantation pine ones for these shelves. I haven't actually uh, screwed those down yet. They're just uh, sitting there. I'm not actually entirely happy with the wooden ones. I actually preferred the metal, but they're more expensive, so I don't, I don't know. I guess I'm gonna to have to live with the wood ones, but there you go, that is the main bench, and it should provide a lot of bench area, I think. Now, time and time again, I get people asking about this blue uh, bench top material and exactly what it is. I'm sure I've mentioned it uh, before, but uh, in case you haven't, actually seen this uh, blue stuff before. It is actually a uh, rubber ESD uh, mat. That's basically what it is. It's an ESD mat. It's got a static dissipative top uh, surface, which means it doesn't build up a charge. And no, it is not conductive. It's static dissipative. So it's in the order of many gig ohms uh, uh, surface resistance, but it does have a conductive uh, back layer on it, which is in the order of uh, tens of K or you know, hundreds of K or something like that. And we should actually get some probes out and actually measure that. Now, this is the rubber stuff. You can get vinyl bench matting, but the rubber stuff is far superior and it is actually more uh, expensive. To cover this entire bench, actually, um, the problem is I, I thought I had, you know, a decent amount of this bench uh, material, but it shows with these new bigger uh, bench tops I've got, I really don't have um, much of it covered. This is not a bad work surface. I've got another tiny mat there, but they're not deep. They don't go all the way to the back of the bench. But uh, here in Australia, to buy this um, uh, blue rubber uh, uh, quality mat in, to do the whole thing, 900 millimeters deep by a 10 meter roll is about 330 Australian dollars to cover that entire bench. And that's more than what I paid for, <laughs> to actually build these benches. So. Um, that's, you know, I don't know whether or not I'd do that. I'd love to do it. And the good thing about this stuff is that it's um, uh, chemical resistant, it's durable, and it will not burn if you put your soldering iron on it, as opposed to the vinyl ones, which will just uh, just burn straight through instantly. So, they've and, and they won't cut either. You can actually get your knife and you can, you know, try and cut these things and you will score it like that. You will put some score marks in it, but you won't actually cut it. They're very difficult to actually cut these mats. So if you're going to buy, they're, they're not just an ESD mat, they're actually, they actually protect your uh, workbench and your surface. And uh, in case you're wondering, no, I haven't uh, treated these pine benches in any way. I've decided to leave them raw, I think, um, because I didn't want to smell, you know, I didn't want to stink up the entire lab with uh, some sort of you know, uh, finish or something like that. They're, they're pretty awful stuff to actually protect these benches. So I thought I'd, I'd just leave them raw and uh, see how it goes. I can always change my mind and clear off the gear and actually uh, coat them with some sort of, um, you know, uh, tongue oil or something like that, uh, some sort of linseed oil or some sort of finish like that. But anyway, at the moment, I've left them raw. So that's the main bench. I love it. It's bigger than my entire previous lab, the whole floor area. It's great. And just to prove it, we'll measure it. Here you go. There, this is the static dissipative uh, surface on top. We'll uh, try and measure the uh, Siemens in a minute, but uh, you can get nothing, of course. And if the, the conductive rubber backing, there you go. It's, you know, in the order of 100K or something like that for like a centimetre distance. And it will obviously uh, go out as you increase the distance like that, but that is a conductive bottom. And no, you can't really pierce through this thing because as I said, they are they are incredibly tough. Like I'm really putting a lot of force into those probes and I am not going to pierce that particular mat. I've made a little, a couple of little indent marks there, but you know, it's, it's really difficult 
to penetrate this stuff. So let's actually switch that over and see if we can measure nano siemens. Okay, I'm on my nano siemens range here. Okay, and it's pretty darn close, it's settling down to zero. Let's put it say a centimeter apart like that. Okay, we're getting roughly about 0.2 nano siemens, and to convert that to mega ohms, all you do is invert it on your calculator. So 0.23 nano, okay, and if we invert that, bang, what do we get? We get uh, 4.3 gig. There you go. And there's my aircon control panel. It's currently 23 degrees Celsius in the uh, room, but if I actually uh, switch it on, is it? Well, there we go. It's a bit, it's a bit tricky, but there it goes. And you can hear a hum. I'm not sure if you can hear that, but there is a hum, and you can see the, uh, see that they're actually blowing now we've got those little indicator rags up there to show that it's actually blowing so probably when i'm filming i i don't know i haven't listened to this uh back yet and uh i'll determine if the aircon actually you can hear it on the video or not i'm not sure so um may possibly when i'm filming i may have to uh, switch off the uh aircon for a little bit um it does get it's summer here in sydney it gets up to about 25 degrees when i first come in in the morning the room's at about 24, maybe 25 degrees Celsius, so that's a little bit on the warm side. So I am going to have to turn the aircon on every day for a bit. I'm not sure what's going to happen, happen in winter time. Now, I've got some uh, indoor plants here. Excellent, because I don't want to uh, just breathe the whatever crap's in here. I want to uh, want some fresh air, so I've got uh, two of those. They'll, this one will probably sit at the front door. There you go, but I love some uh, indoor plants. Brilliant, and of course, no lab is complete without the arcade machine and here it is oh um i'll have to do a separate video on the arcade machine but uh it's great it's actually made in australia not made in china or anything like that a guy down in wollongong wollongong arcade machines and uh it's a really nice machine i love it and uh, i've got my sink over here of course i showed you that before in the dark uh, there's my thermal chamber up there um i can put some other stuff in there i got the cupboard up the top which is empty uh cupboards down the bottom which has got a hot water system and some taps and uh there's my phone um switch uh well my phone uh, interface panel <laughs> whatever you call it and i determined that this actually this office has eight phone lines no short no sh no less than eight there's one down there there's another one there there's Another one over there, there's, uh, so it's three along this wall, that one's duplicated into the office cubicle in there, and there's another three along the walls here. It's crazy, one, two, and we've got three over here, and uh, I've got an ethernet cable coming uh, through the wall there, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that, and I've got a rather uh, mysterious, uh, looks like an ethernet port on the wall here, I haven't actually taken that off yet and see where the cable goes i'm not sure i'll have to uh take it off and actually uh trace that i'm rather curious now here's the uh dilbert style office cubicle and uh this is where i put the main the main computer and if you're wondering yes i can actually see daylight out there although there's not much daylight in uh sydney at the moment it's the worst summer in like 50 years it is awful absolutely terrible weather but there you go i'll eventually get a table in here haven't painted a bench uh sorry and oh i don't know i might put some more benching along that wall i haven't really figured out what to do with sort of this uh part of this whole area of the lab yet i'm not sure plenty of room for expansion i've got the massive bench um which will probably do me for uh quite some time but um if i need to uh install some more benches i can do it along those walls over there no problem and in the center i don't know if you've got any good ideas let me know i've got to get some bean bags and uh, various other things and you know really kit this place out acoustically um i'm not sure now if you look at the roof tiles if anyone has any experience with these sort of roof tiles i think that they're not bad acoustically they may even be sort of um you know they're like some sort of uh uh cork type uh 
rubber thing and they've got little, uh, not uh, rubber, but um, I don't know, some sort of uh, cork type material and uh, they've got little holes and pits in them and I'm not too sure so I'm going to have to test out the audio in here but I'm going to have to install some audio uh, panels, uh, acoustic absorbing panels just like I've got in my uh, office and the amp hour recording studio back home and you notice this uh, area where I'll film most of my stuff is rather dark it's probably uh, been enhanced by the camera here but it's not the light isn't that great I've just got a single 36 watt strip fluoro I've got a total of nine uh, 36 watt strip fluoros in the office here now I, I eventually want to replace them with um, uh, leads or something like that some Cree leads or something like that but a very expensive solution haven't really looked into that yet probably what I want to do is put some front lights on this wall so I probably want some sort of light huge light panel that goes on this wall that lights up my face and the uh, front of the lab here I've just got some uh, uh, work lamps here but uh, these are just for working with I occasionally use them for um, adding extra light to uh, teardowns and stuff like that but I really need some better lighting I've got my studio lights uh, they're down in the car I'll set those up here but really I want some sort of permanent uh, uh, permanent light solution that just sort of works you know I don't have to muck around with it mess around and stuff like that so that's probably my work bench over there I'll probably do teardowns on this bench I'll do other builds and current uh, you know probably build my quadcopter there or something like that so anyway there you go that's a uh, well not a quick tour it's probably taken 15 or 20 minutes but that's the new lab under construction I'll keep you posted and if you want to uh, follow it uh, follow me on Twitter I'm posting uh, photos and stuff all the time and if you've got any good suggestions I'd love to hear them so as you can see there's no shortage of rack space left and I, it's a bit of a shame actually I don't think the labs that well kitted out I mean I don't even have a spectrum analyzer, a network analyzer, there's power analyzers, all sorts of things I could fill this lab up with. Just saying. Anyway, I better get back and do some real work. Uh, even though it's a bit of a mess, I might uh, get onto some teardowns. So, I think I'll get onto these. Had them sitting around for a while. Coming up. <laughs>